Welcome back to the second part of the episode with Mike Lindsay Bailey from from Perenna. Um, so we've already talked in the in the first episode around the this um, uh, let's say unique to the to the UK, but something that's very traditional across the rest of the, the developed world. This long term uh, fixed rate mortgage giving people security over their mortgage repayments for the for the lifetime potentially that they're in that they're in that home if it's uh, you know thirty to forty years. Um, and we're going to talk in this episode a little bit around maybe some of the more innovative, uh, if I can use that word, um, ways in which we're, we're tackling some of these bigger challenges around it. So we, we're, we've we got the, um, there's a project with Octopus Energy that you're working on with uh, where there is a, a zero bills. So this is somebody who um, takes out, uh, to buys an, a new home, has all the technology already installed, um, they get the mortgage through Perenna, but ultimately they pay no fuel bills for the for the duration of that term. So we really want to kind of get in into that and understand that one a, a little bit better. But for um, for the benefit of some self promotion as well, we've also got the Green Homes Finance Accelerator, which is a a government funded pilot um, that we've been working on. Hetio have been working on with Perenna um, throughout last year. And then we were we were very pleased to win the contract uh, to to take that forward in, into the pilot. And essentially, the way that program works is Hetio's um, home energy monitoring system, uh, which um, monitors the energy performance of a property, is then used to um, predict what the impact will be for the customer in terms of energy consumption, um, their uh, spend. And, and their carbon emissions by having this technology uh, installed in the home. So just, um, we've talked about the the kind of Hetio's Flex platform uh, on this show quite a bit and and how it can be used to kind of aid customers in that journey and start to give them some kind of real life impact based on how their home performs, how they use their home. Uh, and that product actually goes live in the next couple of weeks as part of a, as part of these, these initial trials. Um, but I just wanted to talk a little bit from a Perenna perspective on, on that on that trial. How, um, what benefit do you do you see as a mortgage lender from the from the Hetio product being being part of that journey? Yeah, so I mean, tack, tacking on to kind of where we where we left off in the last episode. So we've we have this idea for a for a financial product, a, a green finance product that will hopefully incentivize people to retrofit. Where we're encouraging homeowners to have this conversation with their broker when they take this product out. And, and we're, we're telling them, if you perform these qualifying measures, solar panel, heat pump, battery combinations, um, we are gonna reward you for doing it. Just knowing that your finance are sort, finances are sorted and knowing that you have this carrot does not mean you can just you know click your fingers and, it, and it's done. We, we know it's a, it's a complicated journey for a homeowner from that point onwards. And you know, there's lots of different news and advice out there about what you should do. There's there's so many different forums, I guess, that you could, that you could start that journey on. So what we were looking for was a, a partner um, who could... When we when we get this customer to this, I'm, I'm going to use it. They're on they're on the start line of their journey to decarbonization. They they want to do it. They've got the finances sorted. For, sorted. They they put an extra ten grand on their mortgage. And um, how do they then go about actually um, finding the right people to help them retrofit? And so uh, when we were looking at the green home finance accelerator, I we one of the great things about this this grant project was that prior to the applications for the discovery phase, um, everyone who was interested in, in doing this accelerator competition um, entered their, their names and email addresses. And it was, it was like speed dating. It was like, we did like lots of match matchmaking um, yeah. kind of meetings. And I, and I remember meeting, uh, meeting Thomas um, like on, on a zoom call. And it was, it was this, this synergy uh, very quickly of, okay, you know, we are experts in finance. We can create a new product. Well, we're going to design a product that we think is going to be really good for homeowners to help them overcome the financial barriers. But there's there's other barriers to retrofit, and, and we need some experts who are going to help customers on that and that journey. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's when we decided to, you know, met met Thomas, met, met yourself. We applied for the discovery phase, got it. We spent six months then last summer thinking about how that customer journey could work um, to, to basically say, okay, you're on a Perenna retrofit mortgage, um, but now here's, here's what Hetio can offer to help you on this journey and to give you advice on 
on what to do to what's best for your home, what are the right technologies, um, insights about your current energy usage. I think you know a lot of people don't actually know how much energy mm. they use. They just all they see is my monthly direct debit of a hundred pounds a month or two hundred pounds a month. So that this concept of of you know how much energy they're actually using and what it would mean to switch from gas boilers to a heat pump or to put solar panels on. And so that kind of industry expertise is what we needed in order to to get this product um, off and and to ultimately help help customers on that journey. And so yeah, that's that's really excited to um to to when our first customers apply for this mortgage to to help them um uh, to, to pass them on to to Hitio to help them then on that journey. It's gonna be I am I'm, I'm I'm really excited to start to see the the first ones come through in the next three weeks as part of this as part of this it's a pilot even. It's not you know these these will be live customers that yep. will be coming through. But I, I think it's it's interesting when it's only I felt when we started talking about the, the the journey that a customer goes through. Because as you say, the most people would assume when you if you haven't been through the journey of having a heat pump or battery or solar installed in your home, that it is relatively straightforward. You know, you, so you click your fingers. If you decide to have solar, I want it installed. It, weirdly, uh, compared to most other industries, it just seems to be huge bottlenecks all the way through. And and actually, when you start to see uh, the cost of some of these things to have these technologies installed it actually starts to generate further questions down the line. And we've, we've been in this industry for, for 20 years and we've seen what happens is the customers, when they battle through that first barrier and they get the quote for a, a heat pump to be installed or for the solar panels to be installed, and they start then looking at the next questions, those next questions maybe they can't be answered or the, or the people that the are dealing with don't have the answers to those questions and the customer falls out at that point. Um, or maybe they get sufficient enough confidence and they move through to the next stage and then there's another barrier when it might be that the network operator in that area says that actually they can't have such a big system connected to the home. So trying to kind of alleviate all those points, knowing the the fallout points of the customer, that's that's essentially Hetio's job is to try and present this information in a really, really clear format right at the start of the journey. And I think one of the most crucial ones is the the point around what's the benefit going to be for me? Because what a lot of people might do when they, when they hear this mortgage, they say, well, this is fantastic. Uh, I know I'm going to save money by having solar panels installed. I know I'm going to get a lower rate on my mortgage by having solar panels installed. So I'm fairly sure I'm going to get solar panels installed. But when you get the quote of having the solar panels installed, then you might go, well, okay, I know I'm going to save money, but I'd like to know now because the amount I want to know, I want to have a really good handle on what on what this means. You know, I, I, is it going to be save me, you know, five pounds a month? Is it going to save me a hundred pounds a month? Where's it going to be? And you can only get that if you have, you say, a digital mortgage lender. We, we, we're a digital energy provider. We want to be in a position where we look at their smart meter data, analyze how they use that home using that data, and actually then be able to predict relatively accurately what that will mean for somebody, but also start to simulate those other possibilities. So when you add a heat pump to it, what does that mean if you convert from gas usage to electricity usage to heat your home and you're consuming more of the solar? What does that mean in terms of your running costs? So that kind of digital journey to aid the process and, and using using data and actual real world information to predict how the, the system's going to impact them. The unfortunate reality is you get through that journey and you may have gone, this is going to save you X amount of money per year. And, uh, and actually from a feasibility perspective, this is how the installation program is going to run. Um, and you get the customer comfortable with all that journey. And at the end of it, there's a bill, you know, to, to have the technology installed, you're going to have to find maybe 10, 15, 20,000 pounds, depending on the size and the extent of the installation. But that's where we come back again then, isn't it? That's the bit where if they have the money, they can lend from from somebody like Epirena to make that happen. Um, we're, we are involved in another program under with uh, with Eon um, and, uh, and a company called Solar Zero, where we would fund the, we could fund the upfront capital cost of that installation and they pay it off each month. Um, or the customer, I guess, could go and get a loan or put it on a credit card or whatever they might want to do. And and they would still get access to the lower rate of uh, the, the discounted rate on the mortgage from Perenno. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And I think you know, th that journey you were describing, there's, it's, 
there's having that data and having that tailored advice specific to your home and your energy usage and the way you like heat your home or you use electricity um, is really important. You know, we, we know everyone, everyone lives at home um, differently. People, yeah. their behave, people's behavior um, is, is completely different. So you, you can't just say that one house is going to have like this energy consumption. Right. And so being able to utilize their, their previous energy consumption as, and show them kind of in, in real time, this is what would be the, uh, the change for you if you install these low carbon technologies. I think I think it's really powerful because you know if you're on the Heatio Flex platform and you can see your current energy usage and then at the same time you're seeing what the impact of overlaying these technologies would be, just gives you that little bit of extra confidence in making that jump to say yes, you know what I am going to install solar panels in a battery or I, I am going to install a heat pump. Um, and yeah, that's that trust is is somewhat lacking I think at the moment. And and, mm. and if you if you want. You know, all the if you want millions of individual homeowners to to make these changes, they, they need trust in the system and, and trust in the technology. And I think any tools that you can provide them to give them that confidence to go ahead and do this is is really beneficial. Yeah. Um, and ultimately, you know, it, you want to you you want to make sure that the technologies being installed are right for the customer and are right for the home. And so, yeah, if if it giving them that confidence is it's confidence for the homeowner, but it's also confidence for us as the lender that they're the, the homeowner is going to be in a, in a better position afterwards. And that ultimately feeds into the, the, I mean, I guess, I guess the way that this can be, um, delivered by, by Purana, because, um, essentially you, you lend money to, to lend, you, you borrow money to lend money, you know, so you, you have to, um, you have to demonstrate to the people you borrow that money off to all that ultimately you're doing good things with it in order to borrow it at a cheaper rate. If you do uh, things that that are better for the planet and more sustainable, they will have, the people you lend off will be saying, well, we will lend it you at a lower rate, which enables you to, to, to deliver this uh, more competitive, uh, this discounted tariff, because you're validating the fact that these technologies have gone in. And I think that's, that's one of the kind of key, I suppose, data points around this that actually brings the customer the homeowner, you know, the the lender, and uh, and 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 Hetio and to the to the table it is that data point in the middle because once that installation has been done, we would be able to see through through the Hetio Flex platform that the the consumption will will drop and even one of the the pilot installations we we completed in, in February, that customer went from um, uh, using around I think it was around about two and a half thousand kilowatt hours of gas uh, in, in February. We commissioned that installation on the, uh, on the 28th of February. And then we've just seen the data come through for March and the, and the electricity consumption has significantly, so the, the, the gas consumption has completely dropped off. Yes, the electricity consumption has gone up, um, but nowhere near to the same level of kilowatt hours, especially with battery storage and solar. So we're actually able to monitor that pre and post impact and then share that data with Perenna to, to validate that the, there has been some good done here. You know, the, the consumption level has dropped, the spend has dropped, and critically, the carbon emissions have, have dropped. Exactly. Yeah. And I think it, it kind of, it, it ties off the, the, the virtuous circle here of like, who's, who's ultimately, where is this money coming from and, and, and why, are they, why are they doing it? So like Perenna's mortgages are funded by the issuance of covered bonds, um, technical uh, term, but it's essentially a bond, um, and they are being those assets that we're issuing. Those covered bonds are being bought by um, institutional investors, um, and a lot of those institutional investors have mandates from the people who, whose whose assets they're managing for them um, to invest sustainably. And mm -hmm. so, there's been a a really large increase in the number of green bonds being issued, and, and I think we had this conversation quite early on of saying. How can if we're going to issue this new type of retrofit mortgage? How, how can we prove that it's actually a lot greener than existing green mortgages? That it's that it's actually driving a transition. It's actually driving, mm -hmm. you know, each, um, and on the aggregate, a, a portfolio of homes which are we can see real data that the actual energy consumption is coming down, the carbon emissions are coming down, and then we can use that data and report back to our to the bond investors to say. This is genuinely the impact of of your of, of of your investment, and I think that's that's really powerful because at the moment the reporting in on green mortgages, which are in green bonds, is, is all done on EPC ratings, yeah. um, and so it's this kind of you know uh, 
a portfolio of, of mortgages secured against homes which are EPC A or B, um, and they assume from the from the EPC rating what the carbon emissions are from 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 those homes. And the reporting back to the investor in those green bonds is, okay, well, these homes are using less energy than the average UK home. And therefore this is the impact of what you're of of your of buying into this green bond. And I think that's that's arguably greenwashing because those those new build homes were being built any anyway to, to high emissions. And I think what what we're hoping to show is we've taken homes which are using which are the least energy efficient or just you know have have gas boilers or don't have solar on and saying we can prove to you that our green mortgages which you're fun- which we're funding through the issuance of green bonds has resulted in this level of decarbonization and that's genuinely when when you take a home from 5 tons of carbon to 1 ton of carbon a year that's 4 ton of carbon emission savings and that property is that 4 ton of carbon is saved every year for um, into longevity and so you can we can report that back to the bond investor four tons of carbon on the thousand homes which have been been decarbonized and that's that's the impact that that's real yeah. that, that wasn't happening without without the fact that we were able to to fund this retrofit mortgage and 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 give them this discount and i think crucially the, the kind of crucial aspect to this is because there's demand for, for green assets um the bond investors are willing to take a slightly lower yield. It's this green idea of a green premium, um, and it's 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 that lower funding cost that we get, which we're then passing through um, to the to the mortgage holder as yeah. as the reward. So it's it's bringing in institutional investors' capital that wants to invest in in green assets. It's it's being told, it's being mandated by, you know, the people who's you know, if if you, you have a pension and your and your money sitting with a pension fund and. Um, you want your pension fund to invest more sustainably. A, a Prenner green bond could be invested in by by that pension fund and ultimately be funding um, potentially your mortgage, your, your retrofit. Yeah. Um, so it's 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 quite a powerful funding model that we're that we're tapping into here, which is very different to the other banks where hmm. you know they're they're funding their mortgages with your deposits. So yeah, <laughs> well, yeah um, but and, I, and you know, if I think a, a really really key part there, if you if you take the they say the, the greenwashing is probably the right the right term for it if you if you're basing uh, an impact on an epc and it's it's widely recognized that epcs are inaccurate and you could have two assessors come and assess the same property and give different ratings and uh, and give out different information so you know the, that that validation at the point of energy consumption and 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 that really really di- rich kind of data source that everyone can benefit from you know the 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 homeowner benefits from having that system monitored through optimization so if we can see that actually it's better if if these things are turned on slightly at different times and we can advise the customer on that or even optimize it on their behalf it gives it gives them the lowest possible running costs plus the lowest possible carbon emissions but ultimately from a from a lender's perspective, building that confidence with your um, with your lenders, um, if if we can if we can demonstrate that not only has the home um, uh, energy consumption changed in this way, and this is the profile that's changed, and this is the consumption and emissions changes, but actually start to be able to really go into that kind of granular level of from a space heating perspective, this is how much it was doing before, and this is what it's doing now from a, a, a hot water heating to big, big chunky pieces of energy consumption in the home, start to break it down to that level of granular detail that actually then when you start looking at comparing this to to, to other homes in the future, maybe the impact, the true impact of these installations um, that is probably far better than what gets seen on, a, on an EPC assessment, the true impact of these, uh, these, um, these savings may in time make these things more, even more competitive because the... Um, the, the the actual impact is far greater maybe than is being assumed by the by the industry at the moment. And I think one of the one of the ones that um, that we're keen to to move into beyond the the pilot is we recognise the fact that you know not every home is is suitable right now for um, for a uh, for solar panels or for a heat pump or for a battery. Maybe there is a journey there, a logical journey they should go on. Um, to to improve the efficiency of of the home, um, I've never been a big fan of kind of fabric first. I think I think there's uh, technologies within the home that people may be more inclined to put in, and they shouldn't be deterred from doing it by having to do insulation or other measures first. But there's obviously 
valid benefits to doing insulation and, and those improvements. And it's one of the things that we're really keen to get into on this journey is to be able to we're actually just monitoring that home, maybe way in advance um, of, of the making any of these improvements. Um, so we can start to advise the customer that if you were to improve your loft, loft insulation by 200 mil, based on what we've seen, this is the impact we think it will have on your home. So they can maybe even just go down to B&Q and buy a few rolls of loft insulation and make that change based on validation and data. And they'll see the impact afterwards as well. Yeah. If they then do go ahead and, and put that loft insulation in, yeah. um, they'll see that usage coming down from, I guess from the data that you're providing. They should be able to, I, I would imagine, um, and, and maybe it's it's not one within the pilot, but I would imagine the same vehicle. If, if I decided to put um, double glazing in in the future, if I didn't have it, or I decided to improve my glazing even, um, the impact of, of that could be measured and validated and I maybe potentially lead into discounted yeah, rates in the future. My when I when we were first talking about, you know, how can we reward customers, uh, one of the first products that I, I looked at was from Ecology Building Society. Um, and they they did staircase discounts. So um, they don't do fixed rate products, they have a, a variable rate product, but for every EPC band that you went up, you, your mortgage rate would go down by 0.25%, I think it yeah. was. And so originally I, we were thinking, okay, can we, can we almost pr um, make the retrofit discount, you know, almost applicable to the exact, like for, for every measure. So if loft insulation is going to have this much of an impact, it's, it's this much of a discount. And if it's, if it's solar panels, that's, that's a, a, a bigger change in there you know, drawing from the grid. So we should incentivize it by this much. Unfortunately, it's a bit complicated for now, but it's definitely something that, you know, potentially in, in the future we, yeah. would, we would look to do um, because there are lots of smaller, less costly measures that, you know, customers can do to their home, um, which, which we absolutely want customers to do and, you know, help giving them advice on, 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 on those. Uh, but for, for now, what we're, what we're going to be rewarding is, is the big ticket items, yeah. you know, the, the things where truly there are big barriers for them to do it. Cause that's, that's ultimately the whole point, I think of the, the green home finance accelerator, accelerator is how do we help homeowners overcome the barriers to, to retrofitting? And I think, you know, there's not that many barriers potentially to, to, yeah, like I said, going to B&Q and getting loft insulation <laughs> and putting it off. A lot of people could, could do that. There's a lot more barriers with the bigger ticket items like like solar panels, like like heat pumps. So it's those big ticket items that we're focusing on rewarding at the moment with a with a big discount um, no, a, on, on your mortgage rate. A huge cost, uh, well, a, a, a decent sized cost. And a cost to it, yeah, obviously, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. And then, um, so we, we, we've talked quite a bit about the whole kind of the retrofit journey for these customers. And we know, say 98% of homes in the UK as they stand at the moment need to have some kind of retrofit applied to them to to get us to that net zero position. I think it was a great stat before 80% of the homes in the UK will be the ones still standing. So th then we move on to these 200,000 homes being built every year um, and still weirdly a, a high proportion of which don't have solar panels on don't have heat pumps installed. So they're still going in with gas fired or electric heating and hot water systems, um, which is feels criminal in it in its in its own right, because you're you're kind of you're you, they're they're automatically being added to that 98% of homes that need improving rather than taking a chunk out of them. Um but there is some really, really cool stuff going on in there, and, and um, the, the project uh, or the the proposition from Octopus Energy, the uh, the zero bills homes. This, I mean, this is this is you buy a, a home and you don't have any energy bills for five years. Can you tell us a bit for, more for about at that? At least five years guaranteed. Um, yeah. So, I mean, just before I start on that, just want to touch back on your point about yeah, the two hundred thousand new builds. Well, at least I think. Target government targets are three hundred thousand. Not sure if we're hitting that each year at the moment, but yeah, the, the fact that we're we are adding to this mountain of retrofits that need to happen today is, um, yeah, I don't think I'll go as strong as, as criminal, but it it seems uh, it seems illogical. Um, and so you know we have the technologies now to build homes that are net zero ready, like 
new new homes should not have gas boilers. New homes should be electric, ready for, ready for the grid to be you yeah. know fully decarbonized. Um, and so there is innovation going on in the space to you know to build new build homes which are um, which are net zero ready. And yeah, the the kind of the proposition from Octopus uh, at the moment is is really interesting. They're they're working with a number of of developers um, to say if if you build a, a new home which has uh, enough solar panels on the roof and a battery and, and a heat pump, um, they will be able to certify that home as being eligible for their zero bills tariff. And there's 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 no catch. It is whoever buys that home will be on a uh, an octopus energy tariff, which is zero bills for at least five years. So they won't pay a penny on their energy bills during that period. I think there'll be people watching this show just they'll be, they'll be scrabbling around to find these these homes. Is this this is a this isn't a pilot proposition? No, this, no? This is, uh, it's there's been uh, quite a f there's been a few developments that have already. Uh, been been tested over the last few years, but it's it's really kicking off now. So there's there's uh, at least a hundred zero bills homes for sale now. I know there's there's a pipeline of new developments that will um, be be being built over the over the next six months. And I think 2025 is is looking like a really big big year for for that proposition. As you said earlier, collaboration between different industries, not having each industry work in silos, but you know really working together. Like we're collaborating with you, we're collaborating with Octopus. Um, on that project. And I think that's, it's those kind of like system level changes with, yeah. with collaboration between parties is how we're gonna, we're gonna ultimately, um, you know, do the transition um, to net to net zero um, in, in the best way possible. I think if um, it's by, yeah, connect, we, like, we provide the finance, we can provide products, we provide this this touch point with with homeowners getting getting mortgages, but we don't know retrofitting. We we can't also be their energy provider, and all of these things are connected. And if you can provide different incentives at each kind of level and be providing advice and data along the way, then then I think that's that's ultimately how we're gonna how we're gonna do this. And that gives me optimism because yeah. a lot of times I I am very pessimistic about <laughs> are, are we you know how on earth are we gonna um, you know meet these these timelines that you know that we have to by twenty thirty by twenty thirty five by twenty forty. But what's been great over the last couple of years is I've, I've met a lot of people and a lot of companies that are focused on this. And I think mm -hmm. there is there is a lot of good innovation coming that, yeah, hopefully um, means we can we can make the changes needed. Yeah. Well, it's, it, it'll be it'll be something that the industries that are around this will, will drive forward. And Octopus were a fantastic example of an innovation company that not only does great business and gives great customer service, but actually on top of that, they're, they're bringing real, real change. Um, and then I think one thing that I think does need recognition in some of this, and we've we've been part of a number of programs along the way, is the fact that you know government is behind this. You know they are supporting this as well. The um, the net zero innovation portfolio, uh, the, the ten billion pound government program. I think sometimes with taxpayers they may look at some of these things and think that's you know money being wasted, but you know we can really see. In what we're doing in, in the in the finance, green homes finance accelerator trial, how th there is there is funding that we've received alongside our own contributions towards making these things happen, that will will actually bring change to to yeah. people. It will bring it will not only uh, bring people's fuel bills down, but it will it will start to normalize this for for customers yeah. of the future. And it, and it gives startups the opportunity to, to you know actually use their resources on projects which they might not have been able to do otherwise. Mm -hmm. I think I can quite confidently say that we would not be where we are with with about uh, you know about to launch a retrofit mortgage product with, without our um, participation in in the GHFA. Um, and we certainly wouldn't wouldn't have met you without without um, the GHFA as, as well. So it's yeah, I think it's um, it's it's been really important to help kind of drive some 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 new thinking in this in this space and yeah, we're yeah, ex excited to launch the the product um, later this year fantastic i think i've taken enough of your time but it's it's been great to have a topic on the show that isn't i mean we, we touched on heat pumps it's the exciting world of mortgages yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, it, it genuinely is it genuinely is and i think it's only when you start to tie that together with um with the energy supply market with the technology with uh the the uk installation workforce you bring all those bits together and and actually you know for the for the for the traditional homeowner this does start to become a relatively simple journey, but it, it you you have to have all those parts at the table because yeah. if one if one 
cog is is letting the side down then we need it to be a simple journey and and to show benefits yeah. real benefits because most people aren't going to do it for being for environmental reasons they need to see real benefits for why they should make these changes especially yeah. now when when affordability is the way it is exactly so. It's been great. Thank you very yeah, much no, for coming so on, Mike. Me. It's been a pleasure. I'm sure we'll speak again once the once the pilot and the trials are done and yes. we uh, and we go again. Yeah, sounds good. Join us again for another episode of the Heat Your Home Energy Show. Um, I look forward to speaking to you again soon.